I need to show you what your cinematic videos are missing. Because everybody be throwing down these 120 frames and everything's always in slow-mo. And truth be told, that's kind of boring. You gotta be able to switch it up. Something like this. Yeah, that's what I gotta show you today. Let's jump in. Yo, what is going on guys? So I am just chilling here in Canada. I'm actually on my way. Technically, I can't even leave. I wait. I wait. Terminal? No? Nobody? Okay. No terminal reference. Got it. So pretty much I cannot uh, leave technically because my connecting flight leaves in a couple of hours. As you can see, I have a lot of time on my hands in here. All right, so here's the first thing you gotta be able to. Look for stuff that is in the same direction. And honestly, this isn't just something to do with these clips. We should do it in everything because whenever you have something going in the same direction, it really helps out with the flow of your clips. A couple of my secrets is this. Don't be scared to reverse the clip because a lot of times you can have a sick clip that is gonna look perfect with something else, but you're like, oh man, it's at the end of the clip. I wish I was at the beginning. Well, just go ahead and reverse the clip so that you can just have everything just go into the same direction. Make sure that you speed ramp your clips. If you want to slow a part down, go ahead and do it. I suggest shooting everything 120 frames, but don't let that be a crutch and just slow it down if it looks good. The thing that makes this so effective is that things look really good, but you only have a few seconds to look at it or even a fraction of a second to look at it. So don't stick to doing it in slow-mo, do it fast. And that really separates the men from the boys. So for that B-roll shot, I was just jumping in a different direction and then the chick comes over to me and she's like, hey, do you want to uh, buy anything? And she was like trying to sell me, I was like, nope, just doing it for the shot. <laughs> All right, so here's the next thing you gotta know. Look for stuff that is in focus and out of focus, along with things are the same colors or the same textures, okay? A lot of times, the reason why some of these things look really jarring for people that don't know what they're doing is because they'll pick something that has like a black background or something that has like a white background, and then they try and just like fuse those together, and your eyes are naturally gonna catch the colors before they notice the movement. For example, you see that it's like a green grassy texture, and I'm gonna use the same thing so that whenever you merge them together, you be like, oh snap, this is one clip. Because you wanna make it seem like it's crazy, but you want it to make it seemed like it was all just one video like all together at the same time not a sequence of clips that's the whole point right look for things that are in focus and out of focus one great example is from one of my other videos where you see that I go into the shirt as well as the wheel of the skateboard and you see how they're both out of focus so because they're both out of focus and you pull out of that you're just like oh snap that was smooth so keep that in mind look for things that are the same texture the same color as well as same things that are in focus or two things that are out of focus Yep, that's it. So let me tell you a story. Imagine if your life is completely perfect and it's totally good all the time and nothing bad happens to you. Would you be able to tell the difference between something that is great or something that is freaking awesome? No, because the bad is actually what gives you reference to be able to know what is good. All that to say is this, use some tight shots and also cut to some wide shots. So when you go to tight and then you go to wide, it keeps your eyes guessing, but you can't just do all wides or just all tights because then you're not gonna notice the difference. So make sure that you're going ahead and doing tight shots and then wide shots. And as you continue to just cycle through those things, it's gonna keep your eyes guessing like the entire time. Make sense? So right in fact, I was just passing by this thing. And then you see this group of ladies that was over here. So they were trying to order some Starbucks earlier. I couldn't tell if they were speaking Spanish or not. And they were struggling to order. And I felt really bad because afterwards, <laughs> my friend called me and I speak Spanish to him. And then their eyes just look at me and they're just like, you can help us with translation. I felt like a real douche because like, I couldn't hear if they were speaking Spanish. I would have helped, I really would have. But anyway, they had to figure it out on their own. They did it, it was fine. They did Google Translate on the phone, it's cool. All right, so here's the thing that nobody wants to talk about, but this is what's really going to bring this video to life, and it is sound design. And I know that it just sucks because it's like the most boring thing to talk about, but it makes all the difference. So check this out. I can do like a whole video on this, which I eventually will, but you are gonna need three things for the most part throughout this whole thing so you can have a really good, effective sequence like this. Number one, you gotta have your tunes, okay? Make sure that the tunes line up with exactly what you're trying to do, okay? Don't play something like this. 
and then you have the sequence going like so fast, it's not really gonna make any sense. Number two is this, you gotta have something that is under the music bed. So for example, I would say maybe like some traffic or maybe like people talking or the sound of waves, you know, depending on where you're at, but make sure that there is something consistent, that it's not going crazy, it's not going high up and down in volume. You just want something that's just like a bed that is very subtle and whenever it's gone, you'll notice it, but it's just something that's there that it's, it's kind of like in music, you have like a pad, like just like just sitting there, it makes like all the difference. You're gonna want your wishes and your whips and your Too much? Cool. So you got some good music, bed of something that is just kind of ambient, and then also like your wishes and whatnot. And also make sure not to put the whips and the wishes everywhere that you go. You wanna make sure that you're done on purpose. Which leads me to my next point. So if you're going to do it, make sure that you have a consistent speed throughout the entire video. Because if you have a sequence that is going way too slow and you're watching, you're like, I can't put a wish there because there's nothing happening. Then that means that your edit is wrong, not your sound design. Make sure that you're putting those things together, okay? 50, 50. Video, audio, stick together. Get yourself a banger, baby. Banger after banger after banger after banger. All right, let's keep going. And finally, you've been waiting for it. You gotta be able to tell the story with it. Yeah, it's annoying. Suck it up, bro. It's what I'm gonna keep saying over and over again. Just make sure that it's pointing somewhere, okay? So if you notice, I always put like arrows. Anytime I can see some arrows, I'll follow where the arrows are pointing. Or anytime I see movement, I'll just follow the camera's movement. Because whenever you do that, it's still telling you a story. You see certain things about the airport that I really like because that's really what I was watching when I walked in. And also you saw some of the restaurants because I couldn't decide what I wanted to eat. So I got some different shots of like the different restaurants. And of course, I got myself a Starbucks coffee because I'm freaking basic like that. And then finally, I end it just by going to the restroom. So even though all I was trying to do is just do a tutorial and just show you the sequence and how to do it, but at the end of it, there was a payoff. Just had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> even something as silly as that, there was a point to it. There is a payoff. Don't just make a sequence just to make it and then just end it end it all randomly. You gotta finish with something. People wanna see a big ending. You always wanna end with your biggest trick, right? So do that. <laughs> But anyway, those are all the tips that you need so you can make a sequence just like this. It's gonna take some time, it's gonna take some practice, so feel free to go ahead and do that. Follow me on Instagram, at Keyboard King. Send me the stuff that you're working on. I definitely wanna check it out. But until then, I gotta wait for my flight because we're off to Australia. Catch you in the next one.